Yeah. Well, what, one of the things, though, that's amazing about the, let's say, the moment that we're in, in terms of the meaning crisis, is that I think that, you know, the, the, there are multiple causalities. And in some ways, we're, we're in, let's say, we're following patterns that are bigger than us. Like, it's not just, it's not just about this or that person doing this or that, or believing this or that, or Jordan Peterson or this, Richard Dawkins or anything. Yeah. It seems like, you know, in some ways, there was a veil pulled over people's eyes for a few for a few centuries where it was for many people it was impossible for them to perceive the meaning and the deep meaning and the deep realities of spiritual existence like and so the, they could understand it in a kind of how can i say this like a mythological way where they 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 understood the 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 images like we talk about angels but it's like right so these these beings that are in the heavens and and so and some people continue to believe it in that way like in an almost i wouldn't say superstitious way but a very simple like a simple kind of believer's way which is fine for a lot yeah. of people but the intellectuals stopped knowing what these things were about and it's like okay so you know this so god comes to the earth and then he walks in, and then he dies and then I'm going to heaven. Like what, 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 this is, what are these cause out? Like, well, this is a crazy thing. Yeah. But what's, what's happening, I think is that in some ways there's something in the culture, there's something happening in general, which is breaking apart this veil, like opening the veil. And so that people are now able to perceive what it means for there to be agencies beyond human agency what it means on us, like what it looks like for agency to act on humans, what what it means for someone to be ridden by a demon or to be affected by these these spiritual powers that that, you know, influence us. Right. Uh, and I think, you know, and, and you can see it breaking, like even with C.S. Lewis, you can kind of see it happening in the 50s. It's already kind of they're little little cracks, but now it's like opened up. Uh, but it's yeah. dangerous because most people, most people are not going to go Christian. Most people are going to go weird, weird, you know, stuff. Like, because the, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I have access to this. So let's take psychedelics. I have access to this. So let's, let's, you know, try to have mystical visions of whatever, like completely without any discernment. Yeah. Uh, and that's a, so it's, we're, we're looking down a dark path mostly, I would say. I think so. And, you know, it's 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 fascinating. I mean, I, I have a few things to say. Number one is I think that a lot of people don't realize how much we are subject to the thoughts of philosophers who have been dead for a century or two. You know, how much they affect culture, how much we think their thoughts without even knowing that they've been passed on to us from them, mm. um, which is a normal human thing, right? But when when the thought is not Christ anymore, it becomes other things. Um, but also, yeah, I, I think that there's a lot of people who discovered, as you said, like they take psychedelics or they get into the occult or Wicca and they discover this stuff is real, right? They discover like, this is real. A thing happens when I do this. And um, that can be very intoxicating. Yeah, of course. And and there's a sense of like, this is real. And I've been told all my life it wasn't real. And wow, it's real. But it's like, okay, yes, it's real, but it may not be good. That's right. It, it may not have your best interests at heart. You know, yes, you're talking to a spirit. What is that spirit? I mean, it's suddenly all of these things in the scriptures about test the spirits. Wow, how yeah, applicable is that old, that old stuff? It's so applicable, right. you know? Uh, yeah, I think there's... Um, like, like I like to talk about enchantment a lot, which is an interesting word. Um, I, I like, I mean, words don't always mean what they etymologically suggest they mean, but I mm -hmm. like to still push them in that direction anyway. And I think that's because there's a little J.R. Tolkien inside me saying, do it, you know, you want to do it. Uh, you know, so like enchantment, right? It means to sing into something, literally singing in and, and chant, which is probably a little bit more obvious for, for you in French, you know, because yeah. Shante is just sing, right? Um but um, that there's a sense of this sort of ritual action that that a person takes that then defines the story that they're in and mm -hmm. tells them how to live in that story and, you know, um, affects them. Um, but there's there's dark enchantment. Oh, yeah. Right? Like there's evil spirits. Um and I mean, no matter how someone wants to conceive of them, if they, you know, they could conceive them in the classic sense of some like sort of like a, 
a, a dark looking angel with with bat wings or whatever um as a demon or you can say you know vast cosmic intelligence that has is is you know coming on us from the top and is leading a whole society with a spirit like i mean however you want to conceive of it there's a reality that that we are and i think this is where I mean, I'm not deeply read in philosophy because that was just never my thing. But I know about the sense of the naked Cartesian soul, this idea of, as Charles Ta Taylor calls it, the buffered self, right? Like that's the way we think of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we discover, wait a minute, I'm actually permeable. Oh, yeah. And um, that's dangerous and exciting and interesting. And I don't know, talk, talk about that a little bit. Like what does it mean to be permeable beings in the midst of a... A, a crisis of meaning or like, you know, Charles Taylor, I want to talk about this question of the age of authenticity that he describes yeah. too in, in his stuff. Like, like it seems like everyone's heading for try to be as authentic as possible. You know, what's the saying you do you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Isn't that all about like, whatever it is you are, just go ahead and be that. Um, but nobody yeah, but seems they, to know who they it's, are. It's not a, yeah, it's not a real authenticity. It's a, because we, we live in a, it, it's almost like an inverted authenticity because the you do you is actually usually means something like whatever whim you have, you act on that whim. It's like, that's not you. You're, you're not yeah. your whim. You're not your desires. You're not your thoughts. And that's what traditional, not just orthodoxy, but almost every single traditional religion will tell you that it's like, you know, you're not that feeling. You're not your thought that you are. There's something behind that. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a, intelligence like that would be the word that we use in the west or the noose or you know the the there's something behind which which is beyond all this all this noise you could say it's not that the noise doesn't participate in you it's it is a manifestation of you but it's not you, you are not that and so uh so we have this problem right now which is that people are looking for spirituality but they confuse all the levels it's like they we've just lost the wisdom and so they confuse like some experience or some feeling or whatever. I mean, we've been misled for so long, you know, even all these German uh, theologians who talked about religious feeling, like as if that's what religion is about, you know, the, and so we're, we're kind of messed up because the, so it's like the, 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 say the, the veil is being torn or the veil is being opened up again. And all of a sudden people are able to see or to participate in these spiritual influences, but we've lost the normal hierarchy that the ancient world used to be based on and so no people don't know how to differentiate a demon from an angel they don't know how to differentiate something which is can still cause a kind of ecstasy like you know you can you can you can fall into a trance if you go to a rave like and and you can kind of enter into a spirit and then completely lose yourself in a rave but that's not that's not the equivalent of taking communion it's not the equivalent of doing the jesus prayer Although both can lead to a types of ecstatic of ecstasies, you know, uh, and so, anyways, it, so this is the this is the issue that we have. Yeah.